Merry Christmas. In this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast, it is part three of a three-part series. We did the guards, we did the wings, and in this episode, James and I were going to give out presents or Christmas gifts to the top big men prospects in the 2024 NBA Draft. Find out which gifts we would give the big men that we believe can help them maximize their potential. Stay tuned. Big shout out to each and every person that's made the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first listen of the day. Big shout out to you for listening on Christmas Day. I know there's a lot of family time and there's a lot of basketball on, but you chose to listen to the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast. And if you're listening on December 26th, that is totally fine. We appreciate each and every listen. Like I mentioned in the open, we've given out Christmas gifts or presents to the guards and to the wings. And these gifts are what we would give each prospect that we believe that they need to help them maximize their their draft stock, their NBA potential. And for a few guys, we believe that if they had these gifts, if we give them these presents, they could possibly be the number one pick. So this episode, like I said, is all about the bigs. We're going to start off with UConn big man Donovan Klingen, who has been dealing with some injuries. I believe he's out three to four weeks now with a foot injury. He was someone that I was really, really high on coming into the season. The numbers have been pretty good, and I'm not a per 36 guy, but if you did per 36, he's averaging 24 and about 11 rebounds and three blocks per game. But overall this season, he's averaging a little under 14 points, six rebounds, two blocks per game. I thought he would be about Honestly, based off of the production that he had last year, I was expecting like 15, 13, and 3, but he's been dealing with some injuries. And like I said, I think he's out three the next three to four weeks. So if I had to give Donovan Klingon a gift, and I'm going to give him two. I know usually I try to give one and James gives one. Go ahead. The first gift I would give Donovan Klingon for Christmas would be health. Hopefully he comes back healthy. The next would be... A left hand. Like I've been watching him this season, and I know in the NBA they're probably not going to give him the ball on the block and, and tell him to go to work. But so far this season, I've watched UConn feed him the ball in the post, and he absolutely has no left hand. I mean, what's weird is he likes the ball on the right block to where you would think – he would like to go middle, but he never goes middle. I think he ends up taking a tougher shot, and I feel like he's left points on the board because he doesn't have a left hand or a left hand hook. So those would be my two gifts for Donovan Klingon. What about you? I get what you're saying, but like you said, I'm never giving him the ball in the post. <laughs> so I really don't care as much for his left hand. I am going. But to even if like. I sell, even if he's not getting post touches, like even if it's like an offensive rebound, right? He gets an offensive rebound and he needs to go back up with it. I think he still needs a left hand. Okay, so let me piggyback that. I would like to give him some more dog in the paint. I think he gets. He's been giving out a lot of dog competitive yeah, fire. Yeah, man, that's actually not good. Man. <laughs> Yo, he needs some dog in the paint, man. I, I think there's more players that are way more needing of that than than Donovan Klingon. I think. He's but hold on, though. He, I'm not saying he's not competitive. I just feel like at 260, you should be. Putting, I don't think he's 260. I think he might be bigger than that. Okay, so if he's at 280. Whatever he is, he should be lowering his shoulder and running people over and finish. Okay, think of think of think of that dog that Demontis Sabonis has. And again, I'm not giving clinging the ball on the block. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying they're the same player, but Sabonis is a bully in a chi- it's a bull in a china shop. That's the yeah. same, right? So clinging, you're going to be grabbing rebounds. Off the glass, you should be catching, lowering your shoulder, and going up strong. I just think there's too many times he turns over his shoulder with a weak shot and he gets it blocked. And at seven two, that's just not acceptable to yeah. him. Yeah, and he's—I mean, when you see him on the court, he looks every bit of seven two. He yeah. looks huge. So I'm like, you're a big dude. You should be putting people. Uh, it, it should be. I'm I'm taking people for a ride when I get fouled because I'm trying to put my shoulder into somebody's chest. I might take an offensive foul a game. Like I'm just gonna be nasty. I have questions of his questions about his mobility. I've seen him with some terrible closeouts to to shooters. But if nothing else, like you gotta be 
just nasty on the glass. And, again, six rebounds a game. I know he only plays, like, 26 minutes a game, which is crazy to me. But, like, seven, two, six rebounds per game. 20 minutes per game. 20 minutes per game? Yeah, 20.7. Okay, wait. So the rebound isn't bad. It's not. Why does he only play twenty minutes per game? I don't know, man. I don't. I don't know. I mean, he had he had some games like at the beginning of the year where they were blowing teams out. He played fifteen against Northern Arizona, seventeen against Stonehill, thirteen minutes against Texas. He's mm. only played over thirty minutes twice, and that was against Kansas and Indiana. So other than that, and then the Seton Hall game, I think he got injured that game. He only but, had fourteen. But nineteen minutes against North Carolina. Maybe he was in foul trouble. I don't know. Yeah, he man. had four fouls that game. I just, I just feel like he, even in twenty minutes, yeah, that's that's not a lot. But I, I just like to see him be a little bit more dominant on the glass and just overall be a lot nastier with that physique. All right, we we've talked about him at length, so we don't want to spend a lot of time on it. Alex Sar, what would you give Alex Sar for Christmas? Stick him. <laughs> so you, you you still have concerns about the hands? Yeah, man, I still have concerns about his hands, man. Bigs that can't really catch scare me, man. Do you think he has bad hands, or do you think he has inconsistent hands? You know what? I don't know how to explain that because I feel like you should have. I, it's just hard for me to grasp. I understand this bigs, but it's hard for me to understand guys that can't catch, and it's like. He doesn't catch the ball because I think he's anticipating the defense blocking his shot or the defense coming to help. And, like, that's a huge issue for me. So, like, I'm going to get him some of that stick on that my man had on the little giants that he had all over his shirt. <laughs> yeah. I need you catching passes. I would give him, and, and this is kind of a re re redundant answer, and I would give him a consistent dog or or maybe I just use a different word a consistent competitive fire because there were times on the prep level he didn't show it I mean you can go back just as recent as this past summer at, at the FIBA I think it was the under 18s or, or 19s I think it was the under 18s that he didn't really dominate like he should and I, I just feel like he has the the skill set and the talent the size the length and to just dominate all the time. But even now, I mean, I think a lot of people have kind of penciled him in as the number one pick. He's averaging nine points and a little under five rebounds per game, but he hasn't really been efficient. I mean, you got a seven-footer shooting under 50% from the floor. That's a little concerning to me, 47%, 28% from three, and 60% from the foul line. But with that being said, I would give him consistent, consistent competitive fire and the mindset to dominate. I'd give him, and, and this is unfair, but I'd give him like Russell Westbrook's mentality. Uh, hey, man. All right, maybe maybe not Westbrook. I know it's unfair. But like you said, Sabonis. Yeah. A Sabonis mentality where he's looking to dominate every single night. All right, let's talk about Kyle Filipowski. Yes. If you could give Filipowski any gift to maximize his draft stock, what would that be? I would. I like Kyle Filipowski. I want to give him a three point shot. You know that was supposed to be like his greatest strength, other than his passing coming into college. Like he was supposed to be like a lights out shooter. Yeah, haven't haven't seen it. He's been about I think last year like twenty eight percent. This yeah. year is like 30%. thirty. Yeah. So it's like I want to see him be that stretch five that kid. Because look, he is. He's athletic, right? On the ground athlete is what I want to say. Not above the rim, but, like, you see he can handle, and you can see he has, like... He got these two new hips this year. You know, he didn't have no hips last year. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but he has, like, a unique... Um, oh, God, I got to describe it. His speed. game is unique, yeah. yeah. He has a unique speed for a big. Where, again, he's not, like, above the rim athletic, but, like... He can move and he's fluid, but he can also handle the ball and pass. And again, if he can make three pointers, I feel like that opens up everything else for him. And again, he's to me, he's not somebody I'm not giving the ball to on the block or anything. But like, if he can pick and pop and be like a secondary ball handler again, a la Sabonis, where you can use his passing gifts, I think like he would be a top 
10 pick. But if the shooting doesn't check out, it's like what what's going to translate for? Yeah, that that would be concerning for me because I know Cohen Carr is like a phenomenal athlete at 6'4", but I've seen Filipowski get way too many shots blocked around the rim. I right. think the Arkansas game, he got it blocked like four or five times. I saw Michigan State guard him with a 6'4", Cohen Carr. Now, Cohen Carr is obviously the best athlete in college basketball. I would give him a little bit more vertical pop around the rim. And then I would I would definitely give him a jumper because I think he needs to be a stretch five to stick. I got a comparison for you. Complexion comparison? Nah. What? Nas Reed. Nas Reed will dunk on you. But you know how Nas Reed on the perimeter has handles? And because he can shoot, that makes him even more deadly. Yeah. And you know I was a I don't bit- think he's as fluid as Nas. Maybe not, but he's still very fluid. Nas was undrafted. He was hey, like look, a high, I, high hey, level high hey, school hey, player. I was a big Nas Reed fan. Look, Nas Reed is the exact same dude I create on 2K every year. A you power know, forward that can handle and can shoot that just, you know, doesn't really play like a power forward. I'm a big Nas Reed fan. He was a guy that I liked, but I. I wasn't a thousand percent confident in my assessment of him because I didn't see him on draft boards. But that was years ago. Now I'm like, you know, I don't care what other people say. If I like a guy, I like a guy. I'm not gonna let other draft boards influence me. And Nas Reed is is an example of that because I'm like, I mean, I liked him in high school because he was super skilled. I, I liked him at LSU. Liked him at LSU. But I didn't see him on draft boards, and it was just one of those things where he went undrafted. He went undrafted, just That's crazy. over overthinking it. But so like, yeah, Phillip- I see, I see some just a little bit of Philip, some some Nas Reed in Filipowski's game. Interesting. Mine would be Kelly Olynyk. See, that's that complexion comparison. I think he's more fluid than Kelly. O- I think he's. I don't know quicker. Kelly Olynyk. I'm a big Kelly, think... but then I. Did, well, I'm pretty sure. I, I don't know if I told you this, but I've made the comparison of Nas Reed to Kelly Olynyk. Before, so it's like it's it's the same mode of player, and I think that's what Filipowski can do. But again, you talk about Kelly Olynyk, he makes fives pay because he knocks down threes. Yeah, Nas Reed makes fives pay because he knocks down threes. And if I'm not mistaken, Olynyk was a lottery pick in the 2013 draft, which was a draft a lot of people feel they took they took Giannis, they took him over Giannis, right? Yeah, Dallas did, and they (sighs) traded him for. Shane Larkin, I believe. Crazy. All right. When we return, we have a few more bigs that we want to discuss. So stay tuned to find out what gifts we would give Khalil Ware. We got Svee Messi, Tyler Smith on the horizon. Stay tuned. Locked on sports today is the first 24 hours a day, seven days a week sports streaming platform on YouTube. So check it out. Follow Locked on Sports today. We have all the daily analysis from your local experts and Locked on's national show. So check it out. Locked on Sports today on YouTube. Subscribe, like, share, comment. Again, the first 24 hours a day, seven days a week streaming channel on YouTube. That is Locked on Sports today. All right. Second segment. Khalil Ware. I'll let you go first. Hey, man, look. Uh-oh, when James says, hey, man, <laughs> look. <laughs> I like Khalil Ware, but I have I have grave concerns. Grave concerns. I, I'm going to, you know what, my gift to him, you, know, you may not be a big into the advanced analytics, that's cool, but his, I, I need to give him a higher block rate. Okay. All right, his block rate right now. It's 5.5%. He's averaging 1.5 total blocks per game. 1.5 total blocks per game and 31 minutes per game. Okay. All right? In comparison to, let's say, Derek Lively, right? Derek Lively last year at Duke was at 12.7% block rate. Yeah, he was whooping He was everything, whooping Especially shots. in that North Carolina game. V, v, V's Missy, shot protector, shot blocker. Rim, rim protector, yeah. excuse me. So it's like my seven footer that doesn't block shots, who isn't an offensive hub, right? And who isn't a knockdown shooter. I have He's shooting thirty seven percent from three, one attempt per game, one attempt per game. But I mean, like he's 
the shooting was something that I that I believe was going to be his greatest strength. It doesn't look like Mike Woodson is giving him the freedom to shoot a bunch of them, which we talked about in some That's past true. episodes. But the shots that he is taking from three, he is making them. And the free throw percentage is respectable at, at 73%. But is it going to, are you going to buy him as a pop guy? Not full time, obviously, because he's athletic and he will catch some lobs. But are you buying him as a pop guy? Is he somebody that we're going to have to close out to and respect him as a shooter? I I think he has the potential and the touch to be. If I, Khalil Ware is like, he's like a... S550 Mercedes or 7 Series BMW with a six cylinder <laughs> engine. <laughs> like, okay. you want him to be, have a V. I mean, he's like a luxury car with a weak engine. Like, you, you want him to, you just, you just want the motor to be revved up. You want to see a little bit more energy. And if you're just looking at the, just the basic numbers, I mean, it's it's fine. 15 points per game, nine rebounds, two assists, 1.5 blocks. Again, 55% from the floor, 37% from three. The numbers look good on paper, but it's just when you go a little deeper into the numbers, you see against UConn, two I for see. ten. I was going to bring that up. Against Auburn, two of eight. Kansas. Against Kansas, three for 12. There you go. And then you look at the numbers, you're like, okay, how much of them are like, kind of influenced by the 12 for 13 game that against had the against family Harvard. men yes well harvard does have a guy that's not a family man you're right but he had 30 that game. and then he had like 9 of 11 against Wright state 9 of 11 against army so he's had like three games where he's missed a total of like three shots on double figure attempts but it is the games against the bigger schools where he's really struggled and he's had some notes. games against like Moorhead State, three of eight. North Alabama, eight points. Three rebounds. So again, it's like, okay, he's not blocking a lot. He's not protecting the rim at a high Hold level. Hold on, I got one. I will say this. I don't want to be all negative. He did have an 18 point, 14 rebound on eight of 12 shooting against Maryland, which is, you know, a power five school. So it was like, that game, you know, it's like he teases you a little yeah. bit. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm out on him. I just want consistency is what I'm saying. And it's like, again, you look at the Connecticut game, you look at the Kansas game, like he left food on the table. And on top of that, I don't think he's blocking shots, protecting the rim at the rate that I think he should be. Yep. So it's like I have my concerns. He has the talent. But I just have my concern. For some reason, there's a part of me that feels like Khalil Ware is going to be a better pro. And then there's a part of me that's like he could end up being like, – I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call him a bust because I don't know if he's going to go high enough to where the expectations are high, super high for him. But – he could be, I just think it's going to be feast or fan with him. He's going to be really good or he's going to be someone that you're always like, what if? Because, I mean, he's super talented. Like I said, if he's a car, he's an S500. He's a 7 Series BMW. But he's like the the, the scaled down version that has like a... <laughs> <laughs> 9,000 miles away? No, it just doesn't have the strongest engine. Like if you buy an S class, you want the you want the V you want the six hundred, you want the V twelve, you want the you want the V ten or the at least the V eight. Right. He's the scaled down version where he's just the V six. He he to take down shoes like you know when Giannis and LeBron come out with some shoes and he like the hundred twenty dollar pair versus that's the, that's that's, that's he's LeBron soldiers. <laughs> that's 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 a good analysis. So what would you give him? I, like I said, I, if I, I want a higher block rate, I do the research at the bigs that I've seen. Even like Nick Richards at Kentucky, like they were blocking more shots with the minutes that they were giving him. All right, Sfee Messi. I know I really liked him coming in. I know you were you weren't really you know in on him. What would you give him? I want to give V Messi more reps. Yeah. 
I, I get it. I know exactly who he is. Catch the ball above the rim, dunk. Great on the offensive glass. And right? you're talking about block rate, 2.3 blocks in 19 minutes. His block rate is, what is it? It's, it's extremely high. I know that for sure. So, again, he's active. His, his handprints are all over the game when he's in the game. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He's giving you 10 and 6 in 20 minutes. And he's not as, in my opinion, not as naturally gifted or as skilled as Chloe. Exactly. But I see who he is. He reminds me of Clint Capella. Like, Clint, in traffic, his hands can get shaky, right? But that, that lob threat that V is right now, that's going to translate. Yeah. No, I think that he's going to be a starting center in the NBA. Like I said, I don't think he has Khalil Ware's upside if he puts it all together, but I think he's going to be very productive, even if he's like in an Okongu, yeah. like Okongu type role. I think he's going to be productive and a guy that in the minutes that he plays is going to give you blocks, rebounds, energy, energy and is like your, your, your lob threat. If I had to give him a gift, it would be a little bit more polished. I feel like I feel like he's still a little raw, has a tendency to bring the ball down low, and um, sometimes his possessions just aren't aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, yeah, he's got he's got a <laughs> lot of ugly plays. Yeah. That's because he's just trying to figure it out. But like I said, I'd give him more reps. But like you know, uh, we talked about the block rate. He's at twelve percent. Yep. He's changing shots in there. And, you know, when the, the, I was going to say something. The players who don't have, like, polish and experience, they're trying to block everything mm-hmm. because, you know. They play hard. They, they play hard, yeah. yeah. Guys that are sometimes that are really skilled don't have a motor because they can be productive off their talent. But guys that are – not saying that he's not skilled, but guys that are, like you said, kind of raw, it's like my, my motor is my skill exactly. until I develop more skills. It's like whoever found him was like, hey, man, go play hard. And that's exactly what he's trying to do. Actually, Tim Martin told me yesterday that he did a basketball camp in Cameroon a couple of years ago, and Missy was there. For real? Yeah. That's he crazy. Said he didn't know that he was going to be who he is. All right, I want to talk about Tyler Smith real fast. Tyler Smith is having a good year. He actually was the best Ignite player, at least one of their prospects, at, at the showcase. Because it translates. Everything that he does translates. He has a definable role. As a shooter. As a shooter. And they were giving him the ball in the post on switches, Ralph. And he was scoring. So... What's your gift to him? Because we know exactly what he is, exactly what he does. What do you give Tyler Smith, who's shooting 35% from three on three attempts? What do you give him? A point guard. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I I would give him, and I think he's going to look better in the NBA in a sense, especially if he goes to the right team. But I would give him a a guard that knows how to get him – you know, and, and the pick and pops, a guard that knows how to just get him his touches. And I think that's an issue with 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 um, the bigs on the Ignite. And we can talk about Almanza next. Mm-hmm. But I would give Tyler Smith a I, – I'd give him, first of all, a guard in a better situation. I think he's in a tough situation with the Ignite because no matter how well he plays – it's always going to be about the other two guys. It's always going to be about Holland and Bazellus. I, I was actually shocked that Bazellus, I mean, I'm sorry, Holland didn't start one of the games in the showcase, but I thought Tyler really, like, kind of solidified himself as a first-round pick. And like you said, his game translates. I mean, there's always going to be room for a big that can stretch the floor. I mean, he's 6'11", shooting 35%. Shooting 74% from the foul line. He's been rebounding the ball a lot better lately. I think he's a that's better passer than, than he gets credit for. But, yeah, to, for me it would be a good situation to where – not necessarily saying that he needs to be featured, but he's in a situation to where they – you know, he has a point guard that can get him wide open look. So I, I, I think about it like this, and I know, like – like, I'm a big James Harden fan. You give James Harden a, a big, like, Tyler Smith, he's Shoot. going to be able to get him wide open looks in the pick and roll. for the Clippers right now. You know, like a, a, a Luka. So I would love for him to have, like, a, 
great playmaking point guard that can get him wide open looks. I agree with that. All right, Amatsa. Real quick on Amatsa. Really like him. He can't shoot free throws somehow. I don't get it. And I can see that he's trying to stretch the floor. I see him taking threes. I like his push shot in the paint. Uh, he's blocking shots. I really like Almanza. But you can't shoot 38% from the free throw line. Yeah, I, how man, is that possible? I, it's like he can make the you – know, do you know how hard it is to make a push shot? No, he's got great touch around the rim. In it's, traffic? It's, it's, it's really weird. Like, he can make crazy touch shots on the move. He's got floaters. He's got, I mean, just like his touch on on hook shots is incredible. But the free throw percentage, I don't I don't know. I, 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 he, he's probably one of the more confusing prospects for me. I thought Almanza would struggle with the ignite because of the point guard situation he was used to playing with like just really really good passers in spain i thought he would struggle a little bit then i went to the showcase uh or i'm sorry the the fall in g league fall invitational and i was back high on him i was like okay i i get it i see what everybody sees and then now as i watch him during the season i'm like i'm somewhere in the middle between my initial evaluation or initial assessment and then where I was at the fall invitational I think he's heavily going to be dependent on a point guard like heavily dependent on a point guard and then I think he's like a tweener like I don't know if he's strong enough to really be a five I don't know if he he doesn't fit the mode of what I would look for in a four and so it's like can you be a five at 215 pounds and you don't stretch the floor. Nick Claxton. All right, but Nick Claxton is a vertical lob threat. And I don't, Almanza is a good athlete, but I don't think I wouldn't put him in the same category as like your bouncy vertical lob threat. He's like an athletic below the rim finisher, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I like Almanza. I see what he does. And like you said, a point guard is going to help him out tremendously. And guess what? At the next level, they only get better. Man. 38% from the free throw line. That's is, trash, bro. I don't even, understand that. <laughs> He's so His, direct. Yo. He didn't say bad. 38%. He said, concerning. he said that's trash. That's not concerning. It's bad. That's trash. I mean, that, that really is like, like you know, 50% is horrible. And it's like, dang, if he got up to 50, that means he had to make some in yo, a row. That's like Ben Wallace bad. But do you think some of it is because in the, in the G League, they got that, that crap where like one counts for two. Okay. So if you... So it's like, I mean, on one hand, I hear people say, well, if you make one, then, I mean, it looks good. If you miss one, it looks bad. 38%? Yeah. That's bad, man. Let's just call it what it is. That's yeah. trash, man. Yeah. But I, I still, I really like him. I forgot what I was going to say because you, you said I was being direct. But now, like, I get it. I, I like what he does. He just can't make a free throw to save his life. And I just think with a point guard, he's going to be better. I think uh, I like his touch in the paint. I, I like that he's even trying to shoot threes. Um, and, you know, I had questions about his nasty, about him being mean. And, like, he's trying to dunk the basketball. I mean, yeah. obviously, like, he's getting easier looks because the paint isn't as congested as it is overseas. But, like, he's dunking the basketball. And I just think he holds his own. I think he's going to be fine. And I think that this experience – doesn't benefit him because a big without a point guard is going to struggle. Whereas I think Tyler Smith is in a great position in the G League because everything that he does is going to translate. And I think in college, a team would be like, hey, man, let's go post you up because you're 6'11 and you got good touch. And in reality, he's just a better face up guy. So I like Almanza a lot. I just wish he could make a free throw. Like, that's, <laughs> that's trash, dog. 38% is wild, man. All right, Grant Nelson. If you could give Grant Nelson a gift for Christmas to help him reach his full potential, what would that gift be? Yo, Grant Nelson needs a slap in the face, and let me tell you why. Oh, or some. <laughs> or let me get a slap in the face. Look, because I'm about to clean that up. Maybe he needs to wash his face. What Cameron Ryan said, you need to wash your face, B. All right, look. <laughs> Grant Nelson shot 15 threes in a game against, uh, was it Purdue? He, 
he looks like he's he looks like he's trying to play to his draft stock is what I'm saying. Right? He's trying to prove that he can shoot. And that is what I mean by he needs a slap in the face. Like, yo, man, just go play basketball. Go be you. And go be athletic. All right? Go be great. Go do the things that you have done these past couple of years. That's what made you go viral. Right? So, again, this is why I said he needs a slap in the face. Again, no disrespect, man. I don't mean no harm, man. I'll just be talking my stuff. But against Arizona, excuse me, he went 3 for 15 from the three-point line. My power forward with handles, athleticism. Why are you shooting 15 threes in the game? Arizona, if I'm not mistaken. And it was a close game. It was like he was trying to shoot them back into the game. Like, it was a seesaw game. Here's my thing, right? Grant Nelson is taking, um, I have him down for five three-point attempts per game. And it's like, okay, work on your game, but still be who you are. Like, I don't think he should be taking five three-point shots a game. No. Like, you're too athletic. And can handle. And you got handles. And, and, and got, you know, the dog that you say. That and you, you, got, you will bang. So, like, you're belly. Like, what do they say on uh, NBA Inside? You're open for a reason, bro. Yeah. Like, 15 threes, that's, that's not it. Yo, man, you're not a splash, brother, man. Don't do that, please. <laughs> Don't do that. Aaron Bradshaw. Reps. I like Aaron Bradshaw. I had him as a lottery pick coming into the season. And then he got hurt, and I, I think he's going to end up in that range. Small sample size, only four games, but it's eight points, five rebounds, and 21 minutes per game, shooting 62% from the floor, 66% from three, but only 54% from the foul line. Reps, would, would, I, I agree with reps. And then um, he's just in a tough situation at Kentucky because they have so many guys that – I mean, they just have so many miles to feed. But I think he is someone that is going to really take off in the pre-draft process because I think he's going to be, like, lively in a sense where he's going to just shoot the cover off the ball and work out. I mean, we haven't even seen that part of lively. But um, I think that that Bradshaw can be a – when it's all said and done, I think he's going to be, like, your vertical lob threat slash pick and pop, pick and roll guy that can protect the rim. I agree with that, but like I said, I want to see. I mean, he's only played what four games, and then like he was good against Penn, but you know, no disrespect yeah. to Penn, but again, against UNC, like you know, Baycott, <laughs> twenty-seven years old, like what did he do in that matchup? So it's like, you know, the SEC is about to start. I want to see that. Then I had to move him down just because, like, I don't, you know, you didn't know yeah. what you're gonna get from him. And then, like, he had the good game against Penn, but, you know, it's Penn, no disrespect. And then, like, UNC, he kind of didn't do – I mean, he hit a he hit a three-pointer against UNC. Uh, they fouled him a few times at the end of the game, but, like, he got neutralized on the glass. So, it's like, I want to see – basically, yeah, I want to see reps. Yep. So, I can confirm what I had believed about him uh, prior to the season starting. All right, last one, Adai Mara. I I'll be I'll be honest, man. I was not on the Adai Mara hype train. I left him off my uh, I left him off my first round when I did like a, a a big board at the beginning of the season. I didn't think the fit at UCLA was good just because him and Adembona played the same position in, in a sense, and I just didn't know how it worked. And so far, I mean. I, it's, it's almost safe to say that he made a mistake by by going to to college in the states. I think the physicality is has been an adjustment for him. So if I had to give him a gift, like a gift, <laughs> I'd give him a do over. I give him a what's do, a do over look like? Is, a, a, a is a do over going back to college or is a do over staying overseas? A do over would be stay overseas because it's weird because he's he's probably. If he stays overseas, he probably is playing a similar role that he's playing now, not a major role, but I think because he would be playing a smaller role professionally, I think it would be looked at as better than playing a limited role in, in college. college. Yeah, he played eight minutes against Maryland, man. Yeah, I mean, he's only averaging 14 minutes a game this season. I mean, 4.6 points, three rebounds. 
in 14 minutes. So, I mean, I could easily say I would gift him more time, but I think a do-over, I think his the, the buzz that he had coming into the season, I think it's it's gone. And some people are still putting him up there. I just think he's a weird fit. And then here's a, here's a crazy thing. I know it's, it's about skill set. Most mocks have him higher than Zach Eady. Zach Eady would eat him for lunch and spit him out <laughs> That's if they true. matched up. But – but Mara is a great, great, not a good passer. He's a great passer. He's a great passer, but if he's not think, scoring, I mean, how's your passing going to be effective? Hey, I was never been, I was never a fan of giving him the ball in the post because he wasn't efficient in the post. He came back anybody down with all, your back. All legs, built like a giraffe. <laughs> exactly. So it's like, I wasn't a fan of that. But at the same time, if he does catch the ball in the post, he is a gifted passer in the post. And that. To me, translates more than that that Zach Eady stuff that he does. I don't know. I'm taking Zach because I think in the NBA, college, if they match up against each other, Zach is going to dominate him. Man, we putting him in every pick and roll. I mean, obviously, you do that with anyone, but like we're putting him in every I'm action possible. The, same thing with Mara. You're right. Yeah. I so, didn't say he could move either. <laughs> yeah, so, I just don't understand why he's ranked higher than Zach Eady. Well, that wraps up this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast. We did three episodes for you on Christmas. I'm trying to make up for the time I was gone the last two weeks. Lost my voice. I was in Africa. Wi-Fi wasn't the best. Trying to find places to record. And like I said, of course, I didn't I didn't have my voice. Well, big shout out to you, the listener, for listening on Christmas Day. Big shout out to each and every person that's made the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first listen of the day. We have more episodes coming up for you this week, but we just decided to drop three on Christmas Day. Once again, it's Raphael with my brother James, and we are out. Grant Nelson, man. Go be you.